All right, let's go a little bit further here. Now, this isn't needed if you're taking uh, the Math SL course. If you're HL, you for sure will need to know this, but I think in SL, it's good to see this once. So I'm gonna show this once where this idea of a limit comes from. I think it's a good thing to look at. Like I said, if you're SL, you shouldn't need this, but I think it's a good idea to see it. It's fairly quick, but I think it, it really shows you the formal definition of how this limit, I like this, I like pushing things to limits. We're gonna learn this equation here. The idea is, let's take this equation, like y equals x squared, and let's do it at x equals one. So we know that x equals one, one squared is just one, so there we go, all right. Well, we know that the derivative is just the gradient of a line, but a line joins two points, right? You can't draw a line through one point. You draw a line through two points. So here's kind of the, the problem in a sense. We want it through this point, but we have to invent another point we can draw. Let's maybe we draw like this one right here. Do you see that? Then we would then draw the line between those two points, and maybe I would draw something like this. Do you notice? And then here's the problem, though. That, that doesn't really totally accurately represent what this graph does right here. You notice? So on your calculator, if you wanted to, you could, you know, take these two points like this, you can find a line between them and away you would go. But really what happens, the derivative is when you squeeze these two points together. So imagine I took this one and I just brought it down, I brought it down, I brought it down until I made the two points essentially with no space between them. And then my gradient of my line then will be exactly equal to what it does. That's the idea behind a derivative. This is actually what we're going to do when we're doing this uh, mechanically later on, when I show you how to do these little tricks. We're going to be using this idea. So instead of just using x squared, let's generalize it and say any graph. This could be anything, so we could call this, you know, this is some graph called f of x. All right. Well, at any point, then, this could be some value. So let me just call this value, oh, I don't know, I can just call this value actually x. That could be x here. All right. And this right here, then, would represent f of x at that value. So this is 1, then this is f of 1, if you get my meaning. Now let's invent ourselves a second point. So I'll just plop it up here, maybe. And this would be, now, instead of calling this some other value, because of course I could, I could say this value right here, I could call it uh, x plus something. I'm going to call this right here x plus h, because I'm going to invent myself some little, some little space I'm going to call h. So this space is going to be this right here. This is going to be what I'm going to call h. So I take some x, some f of x, and what I do is I add some number to it, some little number h. Now, what is this value then? What is this height? Well, it's, I hope it'll make sense here, it'll be, let's see here, it'll be f of, now its x value isn't x though anymore, its x value is x plus h. So I'll say f of x plus h. Does that make any sense? That's like the y value for it. Its x value is x plus h. Its y value is f of x plus h. We're just trying to do it sort of generically. Now remember what a gradient actually is. So that might have seemed really kind of, it is a little bit weird to look at, okay? But let's look at this. This right here, oops, maybe I'll do it in a different color. This right here is my change in y. And this right here is my change in x. So let's remember what a derivative really is. Remember what a derivative is? Derivative is just the gradient. Well, the gradient, let's remember how we do a gradient. A gradient, isn't it just delta y over delta x? So although this looks a little bit complicated, let's just see what happens here. And by the way, it's going to be as I push this really, really close, I'm going to make this h zero. So this gets a little bit weird looking, but bear with me. That's why I said hang in there. We're going to say this. We're going to say the derivative. So we'll say uh, maybe f prime of x. Let's say I'll say it like that f prime of x. It's going to be the limit as h approaches 0. Do You see, what I'm going to try to do is squeeze these two together until h is essentially nothing. Well, I've got to define everything in terms of h, so let's do it. What's my delta y? Well, it's the height. Isn't it this height right here, f of x plus h? So that's my top number, so I'll say fine. It's f of x plus h uh, minus the height of this one, which is just f of x. And I divide that by the change in x, which in this case I've called it h. Believe it or not, this is the official formula for a derivative. Do you see it just came from hopefully something that, although it might look a little bit complicated when you first look at it, it comes from just saying this is delta y. Maybe I'll just uh, define it here. This stuff up here is just delta y. All right, this, All this stuff right here, this is just delta y. And all this stuff down at the bottom is just delta x. So we're just saying 
the limit as h approaches 0 of delta y over delta x. We're essentially pushing this point infinitely close to this one, and then we get the gradient. Now, we could do this uh, by just drawing it. I mean, couldn't you just sit there, if you wanted the gradient at this point right here, you could sit there and draw yourself a tangent line, and you could find the gradient of it. You could do that. You could also cheat, use your calculator. I'll show you later on other videos how to do it, but uh, maybe I'll just show you now just so you can see it. You could. You could take your function, and if I want it at x uh, equals 1, watch carefully. I'm going to press menu, analyze graph, and I'll do dy dx. That's the derivative. Now it says, where do you want it? I'm not going to just click there because it's really awkward to do that. I'm just going to type in the number 1. That tells me x equals 1. Do you notice that it tells me the y value isn't 2, the gradient is 2. So this is, it did it for me. I want to show you though how we could have done this exact question by hand. So let me just show you this exact same question I just did with a calculator. Let me do it by hand. So I'm curious, and I'm going to use this equation again, the same thing right here, f of x, uh, f primed of x, sorry, the derivative, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And I'm going to use this function, f of x equals x squared. I just want to show you, if you really wanted to do it by hand, you could. You're going to see it's a little bit annoying, but we're going to do it. So let's do this. So f prime of x. Actually, I don't want it of x. I want it at 1. Watch carefully. I want my x value to be 1. So here I'm going to define. I'm going to say x equals 1. This is going to be the important part. So whenever I see x's, I make them 1. All right, well, that's going to be equal to, let's see, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of, and I don't have x anymore, I have 1. So 1 plus h minus f at 1, all that divided by h. Now, I don't know what h is. I'm inventing it. See what I mean? I'm sort of, I'm adding some sort of thing right here. I'm adding some number right here. This right here is h. Remember, this right here is f of x. Well, actually, I'll say it's 1 plus h. And this right here is f of 1. Well, what is f of 1? If I put in 1 here, let's just do this actually off to the side. What's f of 1? Well, if I put in 1 here, 1 squared is just 1. So that's kind of nice. That means I can put that into here. So that made it a little bit nicer. So let me just show you. So I've got f primed of 1 is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 1 plus h, which I don't quite know what to do there, minus f of 1, which is just a 1 here, that's nice, over h. So I made it a little bit easier. All right, how do I deal with this part? Now I need to do that one. So let's do that over here to the side. So let me say it's equal to, let's see, I still have to have the limit as h approaches 0. Now, what's f of 1 plus h? Well, that's what I put in for my x value. So I'm going to say it's 1 plus h squared, because isn't that the function? It says you're supposed to do that thing squared. So in this case, it's blah squared. If it was like sine of something, then I'd say sine of 1 plus h. But in this case, it's this thing squared, so I take this thing and I square it. I still subtract 1, I still divide by h. Now maybe off to the side, let's remember what happens. What is 1 plus h squared? Let's do that maybe off to the side here, because it helps to remember what to do there. Well, 1 times 1 is just 1. I use a foil, like first, outside, inside, last. So first times first is 1. Outside, so 1 times h is just h. Inside is 1 times h, which is just h. And last is h times h, which is h squared. So do you see I can say it's equal to, maybe I'll do it in descending things, so I'll say h squared plus, I've got two h's plus 1. So I'll write it like that. All right, so now I've got uh, that going on. So I'll write that down. So I'll say, all right, that equals, let me keep going then, so f primed of 1 equals the limit as h approaches 0 of, now this whole mess right here is this. This goes here. So I'm going to say it's h squared plus 2h plus 1. But don't forget, there's still a minus 1 going on here. All that divided by h. All right, well, what happens then? Well, my 1s cancel out. That was kind of nice. So you notice now I have the limit. This is really long, isn't it? As h approaches 0, but we're almost done. Uh, let's see, h squared plus 2h, isn't it? 2h, all that over h. Do you notice that I can cancel out an h everywhere? Notice that? So I can say find then f primed of 1 is equal to, let's see now, the limit as h approaches 0. I still haven't dealt with that yet. I can just divide everything by h. You could see it if you really wanted to by saying uh, I could take out an h here, couldn't I? It would be h plus 2 all that over h, you can see the h's cancel out. 
So I could say it's h plus 2. All right, well, if I make h equals 0, don't I just get 2? So that's the interesting part. So don't I just, now I can do the limit. Because I couldn't do it here. See, if I did the limit as h approaches 0 here, I divide by 0. That doesn't work. I can't do that. Well, I get infinity. So do you notice you have to just be a little bit sneaky, you get there. And do you notice then finally you end up with f primed at 1 equals 2. Oh god. Wasn't that really long? But this is the formal sort of this is the formal way to do it. This is how a derivative really works. Good news. You don't have to ever use this method again. I like to show it once to say that was annoying, but do you see it worked? We could. We just made the two points really infinitely close together, and then we end up with the answer. Or you just use your calculator if you're allowed that. You go, boom, notice it gives me 2 here for the derivative. But we can go even further. I'm going to show you a little trick by hand. You're going to do this really, really quickly, right? So if you don't already know how to do it, there is a trick where you can essentially do this in your head. I'll teach you, oh, the derivative is just called 2x. You're going to learn that trick. The 2 comes in front. The exponent is 1 less. You'll say 2x. And 2 times 1 is just 2. Boom, I'm done. You'll be able to do it that fast in your head. So just so you know, I just showed you once with the really formal way. That's why I said, it's good to see, but just once. Because I think, honestly, this is a really long way to do it. But it is the formal way. This is really how derivatives work. See? I like pushing things to the limits. Now you get it. Because they did a little delta instead of h. Right? So if you just replace this with h, do you notice? f of x plus h minus f of x over h. This is really how we write a derivative here. Ta-da!